Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got something relatively short, but relatively useful for you. And that's going to be how you can smoothly fade in and out audio and overlap tracks. And this is actually particularly useful for ambient audio. And in my upcoming game, I use this exact method. So the example that I'm going to show you is a typical game scenario where you have an ambient track for inside a house and then a completely different ambient track when you leave the house. So I don't really think I need to explain what audio fading is. I think that's kind of self-explanatory. So we'll just jump straight into the video right after I thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date on his current projects. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You're supporting the channel and you're also supporting the development of new games. That is fantastic. I love you guys. So let's just take a quick look at what I've got here. It's just a very basic map that I've made with a dead drop straight into the ether. We'll ignore that. But we have this really crappy building. And what we want, we want an ambient audio while we're outside and then a different one when we cross the threshold and get inside. So the first thing we'll do, we'll set that up and then we'll get into actually fading the audio in and out. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a C Sharp script. And I'm just going to call this Audio Manager and we'll open this up in Visual Studio. So because we actually want this to be accessible from elsewhere in the project, I'm just going to implement a really simple singleton pattern. So that'll be public static audio manager, call that instance, and then in our awake, if instance is equal to null, instance equals this. Simple. Next, we're going to want a method that takes in an audio clip to act as a new ambient audio. So that's going to be public void, because we're not returning anything, swap track and we're going to need to pass in that audio clip as the new clip. So let's make this all automated. We're going to make two private audio source. I'm going to call these track one and track two. And the reason we're going to do that is because later on when we actually get round to doing a fading, we need two audio tracks to actually overlap that audio. So we'll see why we're using two just in a minute. And we're also going to need a private bool and we'll call that is playing track one. So we know which of our tracks is actually being used at that moment. So because these are private, we'll set these up in our start method. So we'll set track one equal to game object dot add component and then we'll pass in our audio source. So what that's going to do, that's going to add an audio source to the game object that we attach audio manager this script to. And then again, we can just do that for track two. We're going to initialize is playing track one to true because it makes logical sense to start with track one. And then I'm going to add in this time a public audio clip and that's going to be a default ambience. So the one that we want to play from the start. And again, in our start method, we can then just call swap track and pass in our default audio. So now we'll get working on actually swapping the tracks out. So first of all, we need an if statement. So if is playing track one is equal to true, then we want to swap that out to track two. So track two is going to equal, oops, track two's clip is going to equal our new clip, track two dot play and we also want to stop track one so that'll be stop on track one or else that means track two's playing so we want to do the exact opposite we want to set track one's clip to the new clip play track one stop track two and then we'll just toggle is playing track one at the end so if we set this up in unity we'll create an object just call this our audio manager we'll drag in our audio manager script and then inside audio, I'm going to have my outdoor ambience as my default because my character starts outside of the building. Next, we're going to want a second script. And this will be what actually calls the toggle for swapping our audio clips in and out. I'm just going to call this one audio swap. You can call this whatever you like. And I'm going to use 
the reserve method on trigger enter. I'm going to check whether or not a player has entered this trigger. So that'll be if other.compare tag is equal to player. And then I want to call audio manager dot instance dot swap track. And we're going to need to pass in the track that we want to start playing. So we'll make a public audio clip, call that new track, and we'll pass that into swap track. And what we can also do, we can create another method in here to actually take us back to our default ambience whenever we like. So that'll be a public void return to default. And then all we need to do is actually call swap track with our default ambience. And we can use that immediately. We can also add in a private void on trigger exit. And this time, if a player exits this area, instead of calling swap track, we can call return to default. So let's jump back over into Unity. On our building that we have here, this is a modular building just made up of planes. It's not the best, but it's just for demonstration purposes. We'll add in a box collider. We'll set that to is trigger, and then we'll go ahead and edit this. That's just terrible. That's miles away from it. I did not optimize that in the slightest. But what we actually want to do is confine our building inside of this trigger box. So whenever a player enters the building, we can actually call our audio swap method and we'll change out the audio tracks. So let's just try and get this as near as possible. We go. It doesn't need to be perfect because I have this gap around, which is just a very, very thick wall. And again, on this building object, I'm going to drag in audio swap and I'm going to drag in indoor ambience. Put my player on the player tag so this trigger will actually work. And now what should happen is I should be able to play this game and when I cross this threshold into the building, the background audio is going to completely toggle. So let's see. So we can hear we have the outdoor ambience. This is actually a track from my upcoming game. And I do want to just give a shout out to Hex Perspective. I've got his links in the description below. He's the guy that's doing the audio for this upcoming game. And he is fantastic. So let's see if this works. There we go. We can see. We can enter and exit the building. And our audio changes whenever we go in. But it was very abrupt. And what we want, we want to fade that audio in and out. So let's head back over to our audio manager script. And we'll start implementing that. So instead of just doing this directly inside of our swap track method, what we're going to do, we're going to create a private IE numerator. So we're going to use a core routine for fading these tracks. And we're going to call this fade track. Again, this is going to need to take in the audio clip. And right here, we're going to copy all that and put it inside of our core routine instead. And now in between our play and our stop is where we actually want to loop around until we've hit max volume on one track and minimum value on another track. So let's just add a few local variables in here. So we're going to have a float, time to fade, and we'll give that quarter of a second, 0.25. Float, time elapsed, initialize that at zero, and then we can create a while loop inside of our if statement. So while time elapsed is less than our time to fade, we're going to set track two dot volume equal to math f dot lerp. So we're going to lerp from one value to another. And in this instance, we know that our track one is playing. So we want to increase track two's volume and decrease track one's volume. So track two is going to start at zero volume. We want to get to one. And for our step, we want to do time elapsed divided by time to fade. We can go ahead and copy that, paste it in. And this time for track one, we want to flip that around. We want to go from one to zero in the same amount of time. And then we need to remember to increment our time elapsed. So that's time elapsed plus equals 
time dot delta time. We'll just copy that while statement and pop it inside of our else and flip these values around. So this time we want to increase track one and decrease track two. And because we're in a core routine, we do need to yield return null inside of our while. So that should be our fader actually completed. So now what we can go ahead and do in our swap track, we want to make sure that we stop all core routines in case we uh, start running in and out of a building really quickly. We don't want multiple instances of this core routine running. So we'll stop all that are running and then start the core routine again, which is fade to track and we'll pass in our new clip. So now if we hop back into the game, we should see this audio fading. Or oh, we should hear it fading. And it does, but it's quite hard to hear that it does. So if we up our time to fade to 1.25 instead of quarter of a second, it should become a lot more obvious. And there you go, you can hear that the indoor ambience fades in, the outdoor ambience fades out, and if we go back across the threshold, i.e. we leave that trigger zone, we fade back into our outdoor ambience. Perfect. And now if we were gonna add a second building, all we'd need to do, add a trigger box around that building, add in our audio swap script, and select the track that we want to be played inside of that building. And there you have it. So it's not strictly a complicated process, but it really adds that extra level of depth to your audio in your games. So that's about all I've got for you for this video. I hope it was useful for you, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.